Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4Diesel. So we've done rear suspension video before. We've got a couple on YouTube um, changing out the rear suspension. Um, the front one at the moment, it's locked down. It's, you know, unlisted just with the link you can view it. So it's a bit special. Goes for about 40 minutes on the front suspension. It's a bit more detailed, including using the spring compressor. Not that you've got one, but it includes that. <laughs> Obviously, if you want to see that one at this stage, you know, if you've purchased the Dobinson's um, suspension lift kit office or something like that, I can send you the link or it's in the VIP group, which is the one that's for clients only. Um, we do this rear one again. Like I said, there's two already. It's worth watching those and probably worth watching this too because there's always more and different and new information, different perspectives each time we do it, I suppose. So starting off, raise the vehicle and remove the rear wheels. The next step is we're going to um, cut. We'll, we'll do two steps at once. I'll tell you about the first step. I won't show you and we'll see if you can find it yourself. And if not, in the next part of the video, I'll show you. We're going to, there's two 12 mil bolts we're gonna take out, one in the brake line and one in the ABS lines up above the rear diff. So just have a look at the lines that come down to the diff and you'll see once you drop the suspension down uh, with the standard springs, they'll kind of like getting to their maximum length. We're gonna put in a little bit higher springs, you know, it's a lift kit and a little bit longer travel. So we need to just make sure we're not stressing those lines out. We don't want to damage anything. Um, so we take those two bolts out just to give it a little bit extra. And once it's all back in with the springs and the shockers, then we may rework those brackets a little bit, just see how they are. But generally the Dobinsons open links on the rears are absolutely perfect at about, I think they're around 605 millimeters, something like that anyway, really good. It's about an inch improvement on stock. So it might go up two inches, but you get about an inch more travel. You can't just keep going. And you don't need the travel anyway, it's got plenty. So, uh, and we're gonna take the sway bar off at those um, D brackets there. Hang on, get around there and show you. All right. Those ones there, all right. It's a bit dark there looking at it that way, isn't it? That's why there's gonna be the next part to the video. So at this stage, we're gonna take off those two bolts from the clamps, the ABS and the brake line, and take the rear shockers out. That's a 17 mil at the top here. So you need to hold the shocker here so it doesn't twist, or you can try and get a shifter or something up onto that top part of the rod, or you might be lucky that it doesn't twist. I find it easier to grab it here. You know, you can either you hold it there with your hand, or we've got a nice, big, awesome set of, um, I don't know what they're called. They're not Stilsons, they're not multi-grips. They're kind of like multi-grips, but they're really grippy, sharp teeth, and they bite in so they don't slip, so you don't, you know, damage this. And I just put it right up on the top here, right on the edge there that, you know, kind of doesn't matter. You've got the spot welds anyway, but just hold it tight so it doesn't quality tools, uh, 17 mil to get that nut out, and you've got another, and I always mix it up saying it's 17 when it's 19, or 19 when it's 17, but that is a 17 mil at the bottom, get the shockers out the way. So we're gonna do those two steps now. <coughs> so, We've just taken the shockers out and I purposely left these brackets here. And these are the ones, I'm gonna show you the ones we're gonna take out next. Now, I'm gonna shock you a little bit and show you how tight the ABS line is because obviously taking the shocker out allows the diff, it's gone, it's moved down further than its normal travel because that's what's limiting the travel, right? And that's what I'm saying. So it's okay to do that now, but next thing we need to do is pull the diff down more to get the springs out and put longer springs in. And if you have a look at this ABS line here, see it's fairly tight, don't get me wrong, if I push it up just a little bit, see it's got that bit of play there, right? So it's not massively stressed out. And afterwards we're gonna rework this bracket and kind of go like that a bit and give it the right amount of play so that when it's fully extended with the new shockers, it's not stressing anything. That bracket up the top there, you can rework that quite a bit. What we're gonna do at the moment is take that 12 mil bolt there out same as the one on the brake lines, probably matters less, right? Let's get over there and have a look. The brake line one's up here, right? You can see the bolt on the left side of the two brake lines, 12 mil again. We're gonna take those out just to give us a bit more room to move the diff around. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now. Take those two bolts out and then it'll be the sway bar. All right, so can you see that? It's just allowed, this line's now loose. We can pull this diff down. Well, it's a bit stiff anyway. I haven't done the sway bar yet, right? Let's do that, right? And of course the brake lines over here, there's all a bit more movement. We're not gonna stress them out. All right. 
Next, we're going to pop out these sway bar racket brackets, and we're going to use what some people call a rattle gun. A rattle gun. Rattle gun. It's an electric one. Impact driver. Rattle gun. <coughs> we're zipping it apart, and that's what we want to do. Right. Yeah, just make sure when you put them back in, you got to pull the bar down a little bit, align the bolts and that. Have a jack under the diff's the best thing, so that it gets the diff up, so these brackets come down. They're hooked in at the bottom, so once you've got both sides out, a little bit of um, jack under the diff maybe. <coughs> they will vary to how well they come out, and obviously you've got to get it back in with the new spring. So I'd suggest not jacking the middle of the diff, because you might end up with your whole car going all over the place, um, you want to do one side at a time. So just, you know, jack it from over this side, right, it, right over this side, one side at a time. So you're only loading up one spring at a time and then you can hook these in and out. Now, I'm not going to try and do it because I haven't done the other side yet. I think I could probably get that out, but <coughs> just for the video, right? That's how they come out, all right? Now we'll go do the other side. Okay, so we could get it off, but of course we're pretending that we can't get it off. So we just got a piece of timber on the jack and we're just gently going to take it up a little bit, like so, right? Take a little bit of pressure off that sway bar. Like I said, one side at a time is best because with heavy duty springs, if you try and jack up the middle and do both sides at once to be efficient, then see how easy it is to get off now, you know? The other thing you got to be careful, obviously it's going to come, the sway bar is going to come down. Don't forget that it is out of position, so if you're jacking up and down, you may need to just make sure that sway bar is moving freely like that, not getting jammed up, you know, down the, bo the bottom end of the diff there, and you jack it up, so, and same deal. So when you put it back on, you're gonna need to jack it up a little bit so that you can just hook those on and get the bolts locked. See how I got movement like that with it jacked? So then you can get your bolts started without cross-threading them. Don't have no jack there, and then the holes, they're not quite lined up, you're just gonna, well you might be lucky and get them started, but they could be just cross-threaded, if you know what I mean. So there you go, bada boom bada bing. Yeah, so we're not gonna do the important parts in time lapse, because then you're not seeing what needs to be done. So as I've said in the other videos, which you should have watched, rear suspension install type videos, look, you should have watched everything on my channel because it's all really good information, especially if you own a Prado, but it, it's relative to all vehicles, really. They're all very similar, you know what I mean? It's the same basics, if you know what I mean. So on the Prado, it's easy to get the driver's side spring out first, right? So we're not stressing that ABS line at all because it's all loose at the moment, right? Now these will come out really easy and it's best to bring it out forward. So I'm standing on the driver's side of the car, left hand pulling on the rotor because it's up on the hoist, right? Right hand in there, just lift it up, quite simply, bada boom, bada bing, as they say, out she comes. Now let's see if the passenger side, did I say driver's side? This is what I mean, forgive me when I say 17s and 9 and 9 and driver's side front left. I'm going to get a few things back to front, so beware of that. You'll know, you'll pick it up, you'll go, geez, there he goes again, he said it's a 14, he knows it's a 17, but anyway, sometimes, yeah, brain not connected to mouth properly. While we're at it, I'll just mention, <coughs> I only work school hours, okay? So please don't call me outside school hours. Um, that's, you know, Melbourne school hours or any state school hours. So if there's any school holidays, that means I'm not working. And um, if it's basically, you know, nine till three kind of thing, um, obviously there's a lot of other work to do in a business and that's what we do outside those hours. The best day to contact me is Mondays. And Monday morning is what I've got reserved really to take all your calls. If it's asking about information about the injector kit, we've got the water pump timing belt kit, you know, the front wheel bearing kit for the Pratos and of course Dobbinson suspension are the main things that we can supply to you to help you out. Um, text me is the best thing. That way you can send me your name, your vehicle details, what it's regarding, and then I can allocate the right amount of time depending what it is. Please don't call me for what oil do I use. It's all in the information. It's on the YouTube videos. It's on the groups and pages. Please do your research. Now, to get this spring out, it's going to come out backwards to the rear. So I'm standing, what can you see? Okay, I'm standing over just behind the rear caliper, left hand basically on the rear caliper, and I can give this a pull. There's different ways to do this. You know, we can get a block of wood in there and lever it and whatever. I just want to point out that, look, I'm going to sort of hang off the left rotor a bit. I've, I've got my left hand on top of the left rotor. When I say the rotor, you know, just above the stud, not on the guard. You don't want to bend the guards and stuff, right? And basically pulling that down and push this up might work. Might have to give it a bit more curry. Now I'm going two hands. I want to get it down a bit more. No, I'm not heavy enough. So, okay, 
this is what we're doing in the video, right? Some cars will come out like that. If you've got a helper, you can actually get them to push the, the driver's side up. I'll just do that now, right? So I'm pushing that up now, and that would probably work. But I haven't got a helper here at the moment. But I have got a helper being this block of timber, right? Now what I'm going to carefully do, go over the top of the diff, and I'm going to position that underneath the sway bar link. I don't know if you can see. You probably can't see exactly. Here you go. Get up there and show you, right? Right? Not on the boot on the steel part. We're not giving a whole heap of leverage, just a little bit, and we're not going to crush that ABS line there. We're going to be really careful how we do this, right? <clears throat> so, basically, make sure it's all lined up. No boots, no lines. We're just going to give it a little bit of... So this is actually going to be in the way for it to come out now as well. That's the other issue. But we're just going to give that a little bit, generally. All right, be careful of this line too. I'm going to release it, reposition now. Okay, so the spring's sitting there. It's touching. It's touching the ABS line, but as long as you don't squash or stretch or damage or whatever, right? So, again, in videos, it's always the worst of the worst. That's about as bad as it gets, right? Okay, that's about as bad as it gets, right? So the spring touched the line here like that. No big deal. But if that was to touch and put whatever, so you got to be careful how you do it, right? Probably not the best example, so you have a <laughs> That's how you get the springs out, right? A little bit harder to get the new ones in because they are longer and heavier. But the deal is, the passenger side's the harder side to pull down, right? So you put the passenger side back in first, and you put the driver's side in second. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll just get them ready. So now, depending what vehicle you've got, you don't want to check if there's a left or a right, depending, you know, these are Dobbinson Springs. Some vehicles, you know, 80 series and, you know, some of these KDSS, they've got a left and a right, so check that out. In this case, it's a standard Prado with coil springs and no KDSS, so they'll be the same both sides, but we'll double check anyway in case something's changed. Um, and let's go ahead and put one in the passenger side. Okay, let's see how this works. What we've done is, as I said, I'm on my own. And you guys obviously sometimes have to work out how to do things on your own as well, so that works out well. What I've done for something different, like I've got a helper, I've put the jack and the piece of timber under the right hand side. <coughs> Excuse me, and just given a bit of a, a jack up, quite a bit of a jack up at that side. And I can still pull this side down a little bit. Right, so we've got the 327s. C59327 is the part number. It's the most common, it's the medium rear spring. Right, so we just want to carefully get those up there, try not to scratch them. Right, and if we pull down, try and get in the right position out. Give it a bit of a kind of bouncy pull down. That should just pop in place like that. That's the hard part done, if you like, if that was hard. Yeah, it's a little bit fiddly. Don't get me wrong, I've done a few, so, you know, maybe I made it look easy, maybe I made it look hard, but um, whatever it is. Now, we're going to lower down this side, all right, which I've just done. Get that off the jack, get the jack out the way, and see if we can pop the other side in without any jacks or anything. Let's see how we go, eh? Okay, I don't know how well positioned that is, but... We need to reuse the um, spring top outs. That's these in the top of the springs. Don't really like cutting those, remove them and putting airbags in, but you know, you can do stuff like that if you want. It's up to you. Depends on your spring selection, how you go, and if you get the height you want. It can be a suitable solution for some people. Okay, so remember this spring had to go in from, kind of like from the front of the diff Right, so just having a look there. We'll twist it around to get the lowest side, lowest possible side. It's got to go over the diff. And like I said, that's the easy one. That's why you do that one second. Take it out first and put it in second, right? So that's basically sitting in place. Just make sure that your top hats are sitting in properly and when you do finally push it up that your springs and your your top outs and everything are sitting in the right spot at the top there 
Um, they just sort of got to centrally locate, if you know what I mean. So <clears throat> now we're going to jack it up slowly. Refit the sway bar. We're going to fit the shockers. We've got the Dominson's um, monotube remote reservoir adjustables. They're a new product that we're trying out. Um, so we'll see how they go. And so yeah, I'll show you more of the install of those, but hope you're enjoying and this is helpful for you. Now, when I said don't jack it up in the middle, I did mean it, but I'm just gonna jack it up a bit in the middle. Um, probably to do the sway bar. All right, a little bit too far already, and see what I mean, the spring's not quite in position. So I'm gonna let it back off again, so we can, it's a delicate balance of jacking it enough to get enough pressure for the springs to sit in the correct position. This one's okay. Well, that one's good. I probably just messed up the other one, so I'm going to have the jack handy. Right. Okay. So this is, okay, you've got to watch this sway bar, remember what I said? These are heavy springs, so if I don't get these pretty soon to where I want them, we're going to give it up and just jack one side at a time, because we don't want the car lifting off the horse. It can be very dangerous, but as you can see, we put a bit of muscles into it, we've hooked one on, that means the sway bar is going to stay where we want it to. That's all I was doing, okay? I'm not even going to bolt it up. Just want to get the sway bar up, hooked on where it needs to be. Now we're going to take that out of the way. And we're going to jack one side at a time to get it to the correct heights and lengths to install the bolts into the sway bar brackets. Same as we took them out, right? And install the rear shockers into position, and then we'll worry about the remote reservoirs later. So it'll do, we'll just sit it all in place. We're not going to tighten anything up yet. But once we've got the sway bar brackets on and done up, and the shockers in place, we will go ahead and refit those brackets for the brake lines and the ABS. Remember those ones we took off up there, right? So we're going to refit that once we get everything in position. Okay. Okay. So now that we've got sway bar in place I've just moved it to the side as I said the timbers here just enough pressure so that it takes all the weight from hanging the bottom there so you can move this around a little bit to get the bolt started and the best way is obviously always make sure you get it even though they've got a taper on them you could probably hit them with a rattle gun like a madman like people do and get them started but I always want to make sure that they're started right without any load on them right so these can be a bit of a fiddle, they can be, so, and I'm probably, again, not showing you the best way because, where's my extension, that's what I normally want, where's that? Not prepared, the extension helps you keep it straight, right? And it allows you to get a bit of force on the bracket to get it straight, to get it started, right? Once you get it started, you can hit it with a rattle gun if you like, as long as they're all straight, whatever, I don't mind. Whatever you want to do. Huh? Or you can get your ratchet. Yeah, you can get it. Whatever you want. What's, what's the difference whether you do that? Or whether you go. Okay. You just need to learn. You just need to learn your own tools and what what sort of, you know, I mean, you're not going to do that on injectors, are you, right? You know, there's, there's things you need to know when you can use what tools. Suspension components, there's a torque setting for everything, but I'd suggest that's fine. Um, it's always probably wise if you're not that experienced to go over it again and check it. If you want, I don't care with the extension or not, right? You know, just check it. Yeah, they went a little bit more, but that's good, that's fine. And then you can say, well, I did okay with the um, with a rattle gun or the impact wrench or whatever, but 
not on the highest setting. You know, if you go hard enough on the highest setting, you rip bolts and threads and all sorts of things. So it's, you know, people like to go and, oh, yeah, the rattle gun there. It doesn't matter what you put the wheels on with. As long as you don't apply more pressure, A, you've got to do it evenly, okay? Evenly, even pattern, right? You don't want to be tightening up a wheel when it's cocked up sideways. All the nuts are tight and it's not on right because you tightened one too much before you got to the rest, right, as an example. Uh, it needs to be done evenly and you want to finish off with something that matters. Like, I'll suggest wheel nuts matter a little bit. So you're double checking with your torque wrench and you want to be able to get, for me, I get a few degrees more. So I might be stopping at, say, about 100 newton meters with a gun. Maybe 80, maybe 100, depends what day I feel like, how much I want to turn the torque wrench. Um, but the point is the wheel goes in evenly, so it's seated flat onto your rotor or your hub, whatever it is. That's the key thing before it hits the ground. And obviously the right torque setting when you're done because nuts can come loose, go missing or slowly all come undone and the wheel comes off, right? So either way, not good. Anyway, let's get the other side back together. Okay, so as I said, we're fitting the Domson's um, remote monitor, remote reservoir, adjustable. See, they've got the adjustments on the end here now, so it's a bit of a new thing we're trying out. Um, so once we get those out of the, the box, we put the zip ties on the boots here, right? So there's one top and one at the bottom. I don't need to show you that. We're just sitting in place. It's just loosely sitting in place, the bottom bolt sitting in. Same at both sides. We've got to work out the orientation of the reservoir. Now, there's a special bracket. I should probably give you the part number and it bolts in, see those two bolt holes underneath the chassis there? So you know, straight in where the shocker sits, right? Look underneath, two bolts, right? Let's go over to the dirty old workbench here and have a look at, um, here they are, right? So these are the brackets. Let me get you the part number for the kit, right? Here it is, right? If you want, that's the proper mounting brackets for the rear of a 150. I'm not sure if the 120 is the same. You need to check that out, check out their website, whatever. Um, but you want these, they come with these standard other brackets would probably work. I said that in my last video where I did this, but these ones are the you know kind of custom proper brackets that are marked left and right. Hopefully they got the left and right around the right way. Left, right. So obviously I've got another video fitting these um, remote reservoirs, so you might want to refer to that for the fitting, or I might sort of go through it again in this one. But basically what we're doing back over here again. Um, we're going to sit the top of the shocker in place, right? Again, this is how the bushes go. The big, there's only one that'll fit at the bottom, big thick one, then the rubber with the divot pointing upwards, right? With that thin washer sitting on top, and that's gonna locate into that hole up there, right? And then of course, a rubber, a washer, and a nut on top. So we're just gonna sit that in position, kinda loosely so we can still twist this for the orientation, which way it's gotta face, because to be honest, I'm not sure yet. Um, these are slightly different to the other ones. I haven't read instructions. I'm going to put the bolt the brackets on underneath there, sit the um, reservoirs in place, and have a bit of a whatever you're happy with. And that's what you got to do. Just put them, you know, where you're happy. And I'll probably put some split corrugated tubing over this as well, as I did on the 120, and that's worked really well. So we'll go ahead and do that. Get those in. Okay, so we've just, you've got to obviously compress it a little bit to um, get it down and up into the hole. And then you need to put the jack under the diff a little bit, which we've done to lift it up a little bit. Put the rubber and the washer at the top. We're about to tighten that up. I've also set one of the brackets in position underneath there. You can see it's sitting there, all right? It's all loose, I haven't done it up yet. And the reservoir, the positioning, just going from memory. Um, I don't usually install these, so. Um, only installed a set on my car, unless I can't remember another one. The positioning of that is around about there, but you'll twist that later. That's Leave it all loose so that you can still twist it. Um, we'll get all the reservoir in and mounted. Now, with the, the mounting brackets here, um, if the reservoir is loose once you tighten them up, then you take it back off again, and there's some little um, packer plates. There's little packers, right? I'm going to show you those, right? You can read it yourself. Use these packers between res and bracket. That res is for reservoir, by the way. That's Adam. Adam's abbreviations, obviously. Pretty obvious stuff. Res, come on, just write reservoir. Between reservoir and bracket, only use if res is not tight in bracket to begin with, right? So basically, some reservoirs fit in these brackets. So try it. If you tighten, it's happy, good. If not, this little packer here, you put one of those 
at the base of the bracket between the reservoir and the bracket and then obviously that'll help everything tighten up a bit it's around about a two millimeter thick uh, rubber packer so what we're going to do it's just a bit of a fiddle around guys so they're marked left and right it's pretty simple get those bolts started we're just going to go ahead and tighten those up no need to show you a video on that it's pretty straightforward stuff um, and get the reservoir into the bracket give it a bit of a jiggle and tweak around and we'll um, show you a bit more video once we're happy with how it's all orientated Hey guys, so I suppose the rest of this video is just going to conclude details fitting if you're fitting the monotube remote res reservoir. So if you are, keep listening. Other than that, all you needed to do was obviously we, we put the springs in, we put the sway bar on, put those bolts in, make sure they're tight, double check everything. Your ABS brackets, your brake line brackets, and then you put your shockers in, tightening up that top bolt with, your, with it popped all sitting in the hole correctly. Um, even if you don't, it'll pop in anyway, but that washer locates and of course don't forget that bottom bolt down there the 17 mil um, now with these mono tubes they're a little bit different because you've got to mount the reservoir now the mono tube remote reservoirs have been around for a while with these custom kind of brackets specially built for these vehicles um, now these reservoirs because they're adjustable they've got the adjustment on the end they're a bit longer so we weren't sure if they were going to be a bit of an issue so this is what we found guys um, on the driver's side it's beautiful right goes straight on you can put your hose different ways, whatever you want. This is the way I've chosen for this side of this vehicle. Um, I'm going to put some corrugated split tubing over it because I believe it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra protection, although I think that's well out of the way and it's not going to have any issues with anything. Um, this side is well clear of the coil. There's no way that's going to touch it. And you can still get to the adjustment at the front there. Um, so let's go and have a look at the other side, see what that looks like. So over this side, a little bit different, so same thing, you know, don't forget, bolt it all together and put all your bolt, nuts and bolts back in. But the standard bracket for the remote reservoir for the non-adjustable ones, it was already a tight fit because the end of the reservoir, it kind of went in, in here, I think from memory, and it was up close to the coil spring. So this was not going to work quite that way and obviously Dobinson's will change the brackets a little bit that's what I see this is a bit of a it's kind of a bit of a trial a test fit as well and we just weren't sure if it was going to work out but um, so what I initially did I had a few different options of things I could do with this bracket including turn it around upside down inside out and back the front and bend it around and drill holes in it whatever the easiest thing that I came up with I just gave the bracket a bit of a bend now so in behind here see where the strap goes over the top see that strap over the bracket if you like and you can see the bolts top and bottom holding that strap if you have a close look you can kind of see the bend it's like I'll put it right in the middle of the picture right in the middle of the picture where the light's shining that's where I've done the sort of bend or the fold and just at the left side of the bracket at the bottom in the middle of the picture now you can see it's been in the vice I've scratched it up a bit whatever I bent it a couple of times I wasn't sure it's probably about 10 to 15 degrees so I'm not sure if Dobinson's will do that with the brackets or we'll just have a universal kit and on the one well maybe on the, the adjust if you've got the adjustable remote reservoirs you may need to do that now obviously you can bend them a bit more but then obviously that brings this reservoir closer to the shocker. At the moment we've got plenty of room. Again, it's a testing. We're just gonna see there's, there's a good probably 20 mil in that gap there. The sway bar, I've jacked it up and down. It doesn't get, that's the closest it goes to the sway bar. The tire's obviously not gonna go anywhere near there, so I'm happy with that. The only part that's close is the coil. Um, I don't believe the coil spring will touch either end of that reservoir but there's one way to find out. So I've purposely left it as close as possible up that end of the coil so we can see. And we've got a bit more room at this end should we need to slide the reservoir a little bit more this way towards the sway bar. Like I said, that's as close as the sway bar is gonna go there. You've still got about 20 mil. Um, so there's still room, you know, you could bring it out five or 10 mil, no problem. But I don't, on the other vehicle, on the 120, I've got it pretty close as well. There's no issues. And I just thought, you know what, we'll go a bit closer. I think I might've touched it. I'll make sure that's all clean so that we can do some testing and then check and see if it's touched or not and provide some feedback to Dobinson's. Now, we've twisted the shocker in such a way 
that the line is sort of comfortable and not rubbing on the shocker so we've got a bit of a gap through there we might twist it a little bit more so we're still going to fine tune it to get you know obviously the more you twist it around the more that'll sort of come out and we will put some corrugated split tubing over this here as well because why not although i don't think we need it but i'll just do it anyway um, and that's about it guys i hope that's helped if you're fitting your rear suspension your springs and your shocks or whatever uh, it's up to you what gear you use. I was just putting that in this vehicle. Um, this is our 150 we're setting up. And um, yeah, we'll let you know how it goes. We'll have to work out how all this works with all the um, adjustments and stuff. So you've got what they call high, high speed compression and on the end there, low speed compression. I think there's another adjustment as well. I better go read the book, eh? Anyway, guys, hope that's helped. Catch ya.